Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Investing Lucia moves one step closer to launching its business incubator and accelerator program. St. Lucia is set to commence the finalization of its national ocean policy. Students in the South engage in the third financial reality fair. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. In an effort to strengthen St. Lucia's entrepreneurship ecosystem, Invest St. Lucia has embarked on introducing its business incubator and accelerator program. While the project is hoped to begin during the first quarter of 2020, the business community is learning basic skills and knowledge about the initiative. In its continuing efforts to launch its business incubator and accelerator program, Invest St. Lucia, ISL, undertook a three-day workshop targeted at agencies providing business support services to the local business community. Invest St. Lucia's project coordinator, Dave Headley, explained the purpose of the workshop. The objective for the workshop was really to bring on um, all the key players and stakeholders within the entrepreneur ecosystem uh, for them to get a better appreciation and understanding of business incubation, um, acceleration, and how this all ties into developing a business framework. Areas covered included understanding the program and communicating its offerings, understanding key policies, client selection, business support services, management and governance arrangements. The workshop was facilitated by Thea Chase of Creda Projects, who is assisting in West St. Lucia in the establishment of the program. She explained the model proposed for St. Lucia. We've been working over the past four or five months in St. Lucia to work with Invest St. Lucia to come up with an implementation plan for a business incubator. And the objective of the training that we've been doing over the past three days is to introduce some of the concepts that are in the proposal plan that we've prepared for ISL. Um, and what we've proposed is the existence of a, or the startup of a business incubation and acceleration hub which is a comprehensive set of resources and enterprise platforms that supports startups and existing businesses and helps to build the entrepreneurial ecosystem so that's a lot of terms that's a lot of words and so the objective or part of the objective of the training is to kind of dissect that and look at that what does it mean so what is an incubator what is an accelerator and what other types of programs are um, important and recommended in order to put in place in St. Lucia to really build this entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial culture that um, is burgeoning here. Um, so we went through what is, the, what is this platform, what does it do, how do you run it, how do you start it, how do you establish selection criteria, and what's the process of doing selection, um, how do you govern it, um, what kind of management needs to be in place in order to run these things. The agencies participating in the training spanned a wide cross-section of the network of business support and included organizations such as Export St. Lucia, the Bureau of Standards, the National Skills Development Center, the St. Lucia Development Bank, Southern Business Association, the St. Lucia Manufacturing Association, and the South Lewis Community College. One participant, Peter Phillip, the Public Relations Officer of the Chazelle Arts and Craft Heritage Tourism Association explained the value he derived from the training. From the three-day workshop, what I learned is uh, how to implement the uh, business incubator um, um, process. Um, it is something that um, we have on a small scale, but um, this workshop is teaching you how to go on a larger, a broader scale. Um, and um, it will help, you know, um, to improve and uh, uplift our level of doing business, um, not only at a, at a level where we can exhibit um, our work or produce on a local basis, but also to create a, a broader market avenue for us as well. Invest in Usha is well on its way to launching the Business Incubator and Accelerator Program during the first quarter of 2020. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. 
St. Lucia is set to commence the finalization of its national ocean policy. The policy seeks to present an overarching vision, policy statement, and strategic outcomes for the marine and associated sectors. A validation meeting was recently held, followed by a consultation on preparing a coastal master plan and a marine spatial plan for the blue economy. Janelle Norville reports. The National Ocean Draft Policy was developed over the last year and on Monday was presented to stakeholders who have been engaged in its development for validation. It is anticipated that the final policy will be endorsed by the Cabinet of Ministers in the near future. The Marine Spatial Plan will establish a long-term plan for St. Lucia's exclusive economic zone. This is the entire marine space that the government of St. Lucia is responsible for managing under the United Nations Law of the Sea. Dr. Cassandra Titley O'Neill is the key expert for marine spatial planning. The consultation yesterday was part of Crop 1.2, which is the development of national ocean policy. And so yesterday they were presenting the final plans and showing how those plans now bring over into what we're doing today. Well, the policies now have to be approved by um, the equivalent of a national ocean governance council and then they would have to be carried to cabinet, and cabinet would have to approve it now as part of legislation. The coastal master plan will articulate actions to be conducted within the coastal region of St. Lucia. This is the area that is found immediately around the island and where most marine-related activity currently occurs. Dr. Titley O'Neill explained the importance of the consultation. Today, we are doing um, the consultation round for the coastal master plans and the marine spatial plans. Uh, these feed into the National Ocean Policy, which sets the framework in order for these plans to move forward. And so today what it is we're basically trying to get from participants is what their vision is, what do they define as the coast, what do they define as the marine environment, because in the legislation for St. Lucia, it's not clear. And so we need to come away today with a consensus of what do you define as the coast, and then that would help frame for us what should be inside of your coastal master plan and the marine spatial plan. The development of the national ocean policy, the coastal master plan, and marine spatial plans have been initiated by the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS Commission, as part of the four-year 2017-2021 Caribbean Regional Oceanscape Project, a global environment facility-funded project endorsed by the Council of Ministers for Environmental Sustainability in 2015. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Throughout the month of October, institutions across the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the ECCU, will undertake activities commemorating Financial Information Month. A staple for the last three years in St. Lucia has been the Financial Reality Fair, facilitated by the Labry Cooperative Credit Union. A Financial Reality Fair is an interactive financial literacy tool for secondary and tertiary students. The Reality Fair concept is a unique opportunity for students to experience some of the financial challenges they will face when they start life on their own. It's a hands-on experience in which students identify their career choice and starting salaries, then complete a budget sheet requiring them to live within their monthly salary, while paying for basics such as housing, utilities, transportation, clothing and food. Additional expenditures such as entertainment and travel are factored in as well. This is the third year that this event is being facilitated by Labry Cooperative Credit Union for students in the south of the island. We are actually coaching them in terms of how we think they can go about spending their income and at the same time achieve two important objectives. The first objective is to meet their monthly living expenses and the other is to save. Throughout the fair, there are many temptations for additional spending and students must learn to balance their wants and needs to live on their own. After the students have visited the various booths covering components of independent living, students balance their budget and then sit down with a financial counselor for review. One of the things I've noticed is that they're very quick to come and get the loan, right? Just so that, you know, they can have that extra money on hand to buy like phones and stuff like that. So
so when they do come to me, I do try and give like a hint and say, well, okay, is it a want or a need? Like, you know, education is a necessity, but an expensive cell phone is not. The harsh financial realities of budget balancing left many a student stumped. I went wrong in um, buying a car. The area I spend a lot of money on was on beauty supplies and electronics. Yeah, I went bankrupt, <laughs> but it's okay, so I know what to do in the real world. The fair was an excellent idea, you know. It's a, it took me by surprise, personally. I believe that, I believe that secondary school students specifically need more exposure to real life um, experience so that they can temper their expectations for when they leave secondary school. Financial literacy training will no longer be a privilege reserved for students in the south of the island. Now that Library Credit Union is a, uh, we're national, we can now accept members from across St. Lucia, right? This fair, this fair is one of the things that we'd like to bring to all of the students around the island, all of those young people who are now beginning to work or who will be going into the world of work, we'd like to bring those experiences to them. Over 250 students from VA4 Comprehensive Secondary School Form 5 and A-Level Year 2, Beanfield Secondary, PI Secondary and Ministry of Education Post-Secondary Program Year 2 participated in this year's Financial Reality Fair, which was held on the grounds of Library Credit Union's V4 branch. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The damage that no. they do. Think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Some school sports results for you. First off, Beanfield Secondary defeated Clendon Mason Memorial Secondary 2-1 in under-15 football action. For Beanfield, Jose Matran scored in the 15th minute and Zaki Harper scored in the 55th. The Nelson James scored for Clendon Mason Memorial in the 39th minute. Beanfee led 1-0 at halftime. Persons with good social standing were carefully screened to ensure the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports selected appropriate mentors for the Youth Mentorship Program. Consultant Dr. Zyphus James noted that persons selected had to exhibit a number of significant qualities before being chosen to be part of the program. We don't want to have persons who uh, we, we are aware of uh, 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 of um, offenders or sex offenders or uh, persons that we, who have had runnings with the law. We want to ensure these are persons, generally speaking, that are in good standing in society, that um, the society see as good role models. These are persons in, who, are, who are successful in their professions they are, uh, and, they, and, and, and they have something to, to give back. And so there, there is a, a vetting process, a recommendation process, and uh, an assessment to determine does this person fit the criteria in terms of their integrity and their, their moral standards and their professional um, approach to life, uh, their, their general deportment and how they, 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 they live life, their general uh, outlook in terms of having a positive outlook on life and so forth. So it's essential that we, we, we provide the best mentor, me, the me, mentors um, for our youth. Selected mentors recently participated in a rigorous training program to prepare them 
for their interactions with mentees. And that's your update for today from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The CARICOM Secretariat joined the rest of the region in observing Caribbean Statistics Day on October 15. The day was observed under the theme, Building Resilience in the Caribbean Community. Michelle Nurse of CARICOM News Time reports. In a message to mark the occasion, CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRocque encouraged everyone to reflect on the power of statistics and how it impacts our daily lives, including in life and death situations such as natural disasters that affect us so often in CARICOM. Mr. Roger Rupchand of the Regional Statistics Department here at the CARICOM Secretariat tells us about the significance of the day. In terms of objectives, it's essentially to raise the profile of statistics in the, in the CARICOM region. Um, it's also used as a, <clears throat> a call to, to in intensify the call for reliable and timely data for you know, policy makers, um, students, researchers, even um, business owners so they can have data to make um, informed choices and decisions. Now why is statistics so difficult to grasp? Um, <laughs> I guess in, in some cases people just have a sort of negative mindset to it. Um, people think it is hard, maybe even a bit boring, but the truth is I don't think people realize how useful statistics is in everyday life and how often we even use data without even realizing Right, so it's not only um, government officials or technical people who use um, data. Um, if you see, for example, in sports, more and more data is being used to measure performances of like athletes. Right, um, the, the traffic lights, for example, we take it for granted um, how the timings may be set, but ideally, with some amount of data would have gone into that. So, for example, how many vehicles um, pass through a certain junction, let's say, in a minute. All right, and you could you could do a trend that's over a period of a week or so, and then you could say, okay, the green light at this junction needs to be no more than 30 seconds. All right, and but that's based on numbers and data that you would have collected. And stay with the NTN nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui n'est pas responsable pour les formations en gouvernement, c'est le CGIS. Ensemble, puis Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, qui a posé tout Nouvelle en Creole. Posé tout Primus Hutchinson. Comme nous l'avons, et nous l'avons travaillé pour renforcer la capacité an habilité pour conduire projet touristique à des villages là. Représentatif à Kai Consit pour un salaire canari et ministre des Affaires touristiques au niveau de Dominic Fede, vous marquez qu'il faut les jeunes à des communes là trouver bon entraînement pour prendre l'avantage développement nouveau ça là. Programme national pour assister jeunes pays à prendre l'état, ça c'est NAP, qui a collaboré et puis institut d'entraînement des affaires touristiques à Monroe College. Le cas pour tuer ces quatre jeunes en deux communes sala et puis étonnement. Ces individus sala qui sortent en village à Slavia Canary, qui suivent ces étonnements là pour 14 semaines. Vice-président de Monroe College, Dr. Alex Ephraim, encourage ses participants pour prendre l'avantage de l'occasion sala. Il a remarqué qu'il était quand même avoué que vous avez tout employé à l'industrie touristique et puis à l'hôtel, à tout touriste et bien n'importe l'autre. Directeur pour le programme NAP, Dr. Wendy Moncheri, dit qu'il est très important pour une nation pour l'intérêt en, 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 en les jeunesse. Dr. Moncheri déclare que le gouvernement cette ci qui a assisté ses participants, le gouvernement cette ci qui a payé presque 4% de paiement pour le programme, et chaque participant a trouvé 600 dollars pour transportation et pour manger. 
ministre des Affaires touristiques et représentatif pour la Canary, on a abdom le Kfedi. J'ai fait un commitment pour six à ces participants qui peuvent former plus, mais pour chaque aussi vrai, ils ont 1000 dollars. Ils aussi conseillé, ils ont pour point bon avantage, l'occasion ça là, pour travailler en industrie touristique là. Il fait qu'ils savent qu'ils ont une grande chance pour tous ces participants ça, en Carib, euh, parce que les Caribes là, c'est une ces région là qui a trouvé plus de services touristiques. Trois en ces participants, Roxy Francis, Natalia Louis et Emmett Sherwin, parler de grandes occasions ça là et manière et qu'à un déo pour renforcer capacité yo à l'industrie touristique là. Business six mois cette année j'ai pris un route pour embrasser l'environnement en façon yo qu'à manger yo qu'à manger et présenter produit ça là. C'est une initiative de Export Saint Lucia et puis c'est pour Bureau of Standards ça c'est bureau qui a déterminé des goûts qualité produit qui a servi sa pays là et que association les cultivateurs les cultivateurs c'est mort cette ci pour placer business à la à leur position qui plus avancé et plus en faveur l'événement c'est à juste là ni espoir qui y a ça ni un produit qui plus mais est différent que les autres et qui a encouragé les pratiques pour apprécier chef officier export saint louis sonita daniel noté qui l'a ni plaisir la place qui a montré c'est mort cette ci qui a fait très bien côté monde qui a servi produit à qui en même façon il ajoute qui produit consommons qu'a fait profit en haut plusieurs millions de dollars à payer l'Amérique. Pour ça, ça là, les marchands et cultivateurs si moins à payer, j'ai pris une décision pour pas servir plastique, pour pas servir produit encore, et servir papier plutôt, il va qu'à affecter l'environnement. Les cultivateurs si moins ça c'est le sujet où est-ce que vous allez les maguer conditions tant qu'a fait bataille puis où et qui va continuer pour poursuivre la place là à l'Amérique. Production Staki, qui a assisté et puis Moun qui a souffert et puis habilité pour tant bien. Pour la troisième fois, qui a visité cette ici pour aider Moun qui a souffert et puis problème ça là. Il y a aussi Greg Fondation, Kirk Richards de Kirk. Attention, c'est pour aider Moun à cette ici qui n'a besoin d'assistance pour sa tant primaire et pour bailler ses équipements qui a aidé en face à ça là. Plan, il dit, c'est pour faire assurer qu'il y a trouvé un traitement pour avoir eu à la clinique à Health Center Country pour être vieux fort. Il y a un grand chef de la société, là, je parle de la responsabilité du département de santé et du ministère de la santé. C'est pour faire assurer que tout le monde qui a eu ce problème, ça a trouvé un traitement et pour conduire le programme pour continuer à assister. Il y a aussi qui a eu trois cliniques. Il y a à l'hôpital Soufrier tous les deuxièmes samedi à moi. À Castri, à Facility de St. John's Ambulance, tous les troisième samedi. Et à un vieux uh, wellness center en vieux fort pour le troisième samedi en moi pour, pour les gens qui nous besoin d'assistance de différentes façons. Toutes ces patients-là recevront équipement pour aider les tonnes primaires en 100 pieds pièces large. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons pour nous là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne plus encore. Si tu as conservé la vie, tu as présenté une autre nouvelle en créole. C'est à présent, tu as présenté une autre nouvelle en Merci, on peut le primus. Et ici, on peut voir ce qui se passe à nous, weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and a few thunderstorms. A tropical wave is currently moving over the eastern Caribbean region and it will maintain cloudy conditions with scattered showers and a few thunderstorms across the islands during the next 24 hours. Another tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour is high at present. The tide for Vieux-Fort Bay was low at 12.21 p.m. and is high at present. The sea is slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.55 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.